since the Ray Longo Minute. No Matt Sarah interruptions this week. I'm actually in the great state of New York right now, would you believe it, and couldn't get my ass to law. When are you coming? How long are you going to be in New York for? I'll be here till Wednesday. I uh, I just couldn't I couldn't figure out a way to get down there and make it work with, with Ken Flo's schedule and TJ has a million things going on with Invicta this week. So I hate hey, when hey, I'm hey, like, hey. look, he, he's he's trying to put the blame on me here, Belongo. <laughs> I mean, what the? Can you hijack? Can you kidnap this kid and just bring him along out Long Island? Yeah, What's where going is you? Where in New York are you? I'm actually might send somebody <laughs> to get you. Where are yeah. you in New York? I'm, I'm just so afraid. I'm I'm so afraid to hit pads that uh, I'm hiding hey, out. I am at the. Uh, how about how come come in and say hello? I'll get Drago to do a, a one-on-one with you. With your there jiu-jitsu. You uh, oh God, please no! I'd let, I, you know I gotta, I, I gotta I gotta make up for my friend rudely interrupting us last week. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, horrible. I forgot my gi again. That's becoming my life story, not traveling with the gi. No, I'm at the Viceroy Hotel, uh, 120 West 57th Street, New York, New York. What's the room number? Right the room number. I am on the sixth. Floor. I'm on the sixth floor. You're gonna have to go door go to door. Him. I'm on, on floor him. six. <laughs> so, uh, so what's going on, dude? 18 days out from a big one. Obviously, UFC 210, Weidman versus Musasi. It is a pick'em fight right now, according to Las Vegas. Very good. That's good. You know, so I'm going with my guy, obviously, but uh, <laughs> you know, Musasi's on a good roll, so I got to get that. You know, and then. Uh, Look, Chris has got his back against the wall, man. It's not easy. I think we're going to find out what he's made of this fight because he's down, you know, two fights, and I think that's a really tough thing, uh, you know, to have mentally. But uh, he's having a great camp, and uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be good. going to be a good night. So I'd imagine a lot of the haze in the barn at this point in time, 18 days out, but at least one more hard week ahead of you here, yes? Yeah, yeah, and I'm just really – Really, I'm happy where where his cardio is at. I just want that to be on point. He had great sparring with all you know, a couple of people we brought in throughout the last uh, bunch of weeks, and then that's it. Yeah, it's just uh, keeping him focused and keeping him healthy more than anything. Which that you know that gets tougher and tougher. You know, right? Right. Uh, has he been healthy, and 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 how is his mental state heading into this fight? I know you said you know he his his back is against the wall uh, a, a little bit here and. You know, I, I, I tweeted something uh, the other day about how, you know, he said, you know, I, I don't think Musasi is that great of a fighter. He hasn't really won a lot, you know, any of the big fights. That concerned me a little bit for Chris. What, what's his mental state uh, heading into this? Yeah, fight? you know, that, that, that you know, I didn't hear that. But, uh, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I could tell you as his coach, I'm definitely not underestimating the guy. And I think he's a very relaxed fighter. Uh, I think, you know, he... You know, it doesn't push the greatest pace, but uh, he's not going to get rattled either. You know what I mean? And, right. uh, you know, he's got a lot of fights. That's a lot of experience. He's got three times the amount of fights Chris has. But he, he doesn't, you know, he seems to come up short in the big fights. I think that's kind of what he was saying. Right, That right. when he's really in there with the elite competition, uh, you know, he doesn't fare too well. But, uh, yep. you know, guys that are, you know, just, Outside of the top ten, I think he just runs right through him. I mean, which he's you know he did it with Uriah Hall, he did it with Costa Filippo, he did it with uh, some other guy I don't even know his name, but I think the Jacarays, the Machitas, you know, the guys that are at that top level, this is a big fight for him also, you know, and and that's yeah. why you know I tell Chris he's coming guns blazing because you're a big name to have on the resume, you know, so right, it's uh yeah it's it's gonna be I, I like where his head's at, you know, he's back, he's aggressive. You know, he's, uh, like, again, his cardio's on point. So, again, it's just keeping the cardio up, keeping the reflexes, the timing, you know, toning down the sparring a little bit. He maybe has, you know, like a couple of hard sparrings left and then just making sure. I think the three rounds is going to uh, be be in his advantage because he could push a really hard pace. I can't wait for that fight, man. Two, two of my favorite fighters going at it right there. And, uh, I yeah, guess yeah, I'm but I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think he's underestimating uh, – He's definitely not underestimating the guy's stand-up. I think he's just, yeah. he when he analyzed the fights, I think he watches some of the bigger fights, and that's what I think that's what he's kind of saying. Yep. Like, he didn't, yeah, that, you know, he hasn't faced a competition. Well, he did good with Vitor, too, so, yeah, he, he's had a couple of good ones. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, Ray, did, did you get a chance to watch the UFC London card, and, and, and what did you think? I saw... Uh, you know, it was sporadic. I definitely saw the Manawa fight with Corey Anderson, which was 
which was wild. I mean, that, that kid's, you know, he's not a kid, but I mean, that guy's, you know, on a bit of a roll now. And uh, I don't think Corey's the easiest guy to knock out. I yeah, right. think I thought Corey was, I thought Corey was going to implement his wrestling a little better, but uh, I think that was a big win for Jimmy Manoa at this stage of his career. And I, I think if you stay in the pocket with Jimmy Manoa, he'll, he could probably knock out anybody. Well, yeah, we know what he can do with the right hand, obviously. The left hook was the weapon of choice on this night. And I've even talked to Brian Stan when he sort of talks about maybe coming back to fight. He's going right to New Jersey to train with Corey Overtime Anderson every day. I mean, this is a guy who you can't really outwork. So, obviously, people thought if Manoa got it done, it was likely going to be by knockout. But I think a lot of people are surprised with just how easily he was able to put Corey Anderson away. And he's 37 years old. So a big win for Corey Anderson. So we're talking about the fights here, Ray. I thought it was interesting. Matt Sarah last week, he's like, ah, oh, you guys probably want to talk about the fights. So like, do they talk about the fights on their podcast or do they just sort of shoot the breeze and try to be funny? <laughs> That's a question for him. <clears throat> that guy is first off. Let me, let me again, apologize for my rude friend <laughs> list. We did a, <laughs> I kind of just uh, tried to have a coup of our podcast, but um, <laughs> no, he, he interviews a lot of fighters and he, yeah. Uh, yeah. he kind of breaks them down. You know, I mean, he does, uh, you know, I think he, uh, they're definitely talking about fights and not just shooting the shit, no, but uh, it's I'm mostly, just... yeah, it's mostly, mostly shooting the shit, but he does, uh, you know, he's very in tune with the fights and uh, you know, he's got some great insight as usual. Of course, you know, I hate no, to I, give I hate to give it up. I hate to give it up to him, but he, he does. So, oh yeah, no, he, he lights so. up the room. Not unlike you, he's uh, no. We're all we're all we're all friends here. I just uh, if you're gonna oh no no, no no let me tell you something. You 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 have to understand. This is a group. If you're not insulting each other, something's right. wrong. I mean right. that that's that, that's kind of the way it goes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, you want to dig can, the Anakin Florian podcast for talking about mixed martial arts? You know, guilty as charged, dude. Okay. That's what we're here for. Uh, hey, so before I let you go, so someone asked yeah. me about this this Weidman Musasi betting line, right? Yeah. Chris was a slight favorite. Now in most places, it's a pick'em. And you know I'm an avid gambler. I'm calling this fight, and I don't bet on UFC fights. Obviously, could contractually prevented from doing so. I don't know that Musasi is a guy in this current form that I would want to fade or bet against. But, dude, I mean, isn't Weidman like a system play coming off two losses? I mean, he's the last guy I would want to fight staring at potentially a third straight loss. I mean, I got to think he's going to be at the height of motivation. He was doing a lot of things right against Yoel Romero, you know? I mean, so yeah. I don't yes, I think yes, a, he was. A, yeah, I agree with that. He was he was really, I thought, you know, and, and again, you got to remember what Romero the game plan was to, you know, make him wrestle a little bit, whether you would, you know, just to make him work to have a big third round, you know. So that was, and we weren't far off. I thought he won the first round, you know, he lost the second round, but he made him work. And uh, I think the, you know, he just, he just made a little mistake and it, it really cost him big. So I, I like, again, it's, uh, I expect to see a totally, totally different person on yeah. April 8th. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'll be the first guy to say, I'm shocked if I don't see it, but, yeah. I think he's in the right spot, and I think what you're saying is right on the money. I mean, he's he's coming out guns blazing. Yeah, like I guess what I'm saying is that if you're betting on Musasi here, you're also betting on Chris Weidman, one of the greatest middleweights of all time, to suffer a third consecutive loss. You know, and I put Musasi too. I mean, these are these are all time great middleweights. You know, I think these are Hall of Fame type fighters. But again, a bet on Musasi means that Weidman loses three straight, and uh, man. That would be a, a tough reality, obviously, for you guys to walk into after the fight. We're looking forward to it. April 8th, UFC 210. That's your co-main event. And uh, drinks, dinner, what? it's all on me, okay, in Buffalo. I'll see you there. It's all on me. Wait, wait, no, no, don't say it's all on you. I know you're at the Viceroy. Expect what? a knock on your door. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you're, you're, getting out to Long, Get you're getting out to Long Island one way. Now, you don't even have to hit anything. Come out and say hello. Watch All everybody right. train. All right. I'll try to come out tomorrow night, uh, and I'm in room 612 if you get here first. Beautiful. There All you right. go. All <laughs> right, my man. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> take it easy. All right, take care, guys. Raymond Peter Longo joining us live every week here on the Anakin Florian Podcast. Yeah, a little dust-up with Ken Flo and Weidman on Twitter. I know it was friendly, but yeah. – I don't think either one of us necessarily loved hearing that commentary. I mean, this is Musasi. This is a five-tool player, Gegar Musasi, man. And, and you can be sure Weidman will have his eyes dotted and his T's crossed.
Yeah. Oh, you got to respect Musasi. That, that was my concern for Chris, you know. And uh, and listen, if he wants a piece of the flow, he can come get it. <laughs> yeah, oh, do. I mean, I, listen, I'm 40 years old and I can barely move, but I can run pretty fast. Dude, I've been 